Hi everyone, welcome back into uh, the studio, welcome back to the classroom. I'm going to uh, show you today some really fun, kind of what I, uh, what I do when I'm going to do a commission painting, a bigger painting. I work a thumbnail, smaller painting of it. Now for a lot of times, I can take a painting like this and finish it off completely. But, uh, you know, I want to show you how I work pretty fast to do this uh, seascape and then back that side <laughs> over there in the back behind me over there. That's a uh, 24 by 42, you can't see the whole thing, inch long seascape that this painting will become as I take it in to do a studio painting. So this is just like I would be going out plain air painting something, getting an idea. Then we bring it back into the studio and I do a full size uh, studio painting. So I'll go behind the scenes with some of you uh, that are in our membership and I will uh, show you some of the behind the scenes painting of a large studio uh, seascape after we do this one, okay? For, so let's get into this one. So my colors, this is my, my classic uh, YouTube working palette. Uh, the Hansa Yellow, Darya Light Yellow. Uh, yellow oxide this is the burnt sienna red, naphthol red light pine green thalo blue uh this is a red violet and cornacridone violet and usually when i paint a lot of water or um you know a lot of sky into something i'll put out a couple of blues the, the thalo blue and the very popular ultramarine blue or i put out the uh, sapphire which i thought i had some, yeah which i do right here the sapphire which is a nice uh, medium blue works really really well it's a mixed blue it is a thalo blue ultramarine blue black and white so it's already pre-toned okay so we may we may put that out but let's get into this okay so i have a reference photo here that i got from adobe stock and um it's just a nice seascape and this person wanted to uh, you know just the uh, the coastline and stuff and so We'll, we'll see if this works. This is nice way, those of you that are selling artists or, you know, you go out to art shows or something and you get people who want something like this, you work a smaller painting. And this, again, this is a little larger than uh, what some of you can do. You can do like an 8 by 10 or something like that, smaller. Um, but it gives them an idea and you an idea to work through the process of what it is they want to see. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is come down here and... On this one, when I look at the uh, the photo that I referenced photo, about a third of it is in sky, two thirds of it is down in the uh, um, into the water and stuff. So I'm going to start right about there. I'm just going to take a, a small brush here and um, we'll take a little bit of thalo blue and a little bit of the uh, uh, white and cornacridone. And I'm going to keep it right around and I'll look up there, you know, and I always compare it to the value scale I go through. We're very, the, the sky, and I know it's kind of hard for you to see with that, the, uh, the sky and the water come together right there about in that particular medium value right there. And so that's going to give us a lot of it, what we call atmospheric depth. And I want to keep that area there about a five or so. And so that's going to be pretty good. See, it's lighter than the four. And it's just, it's right about a six, which means it'll dry down to a five. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of take my, and I only need a little bit of this because we're going to go right into land. And I just go ahead and draw my, you know, my, what is going to be my horizon line here. Now, Sometimes I do it really thin, sometimes I do it a little thicker like this, sometimes I blur it, but that gives me a nice, a nice, and I like when I get like little broken stuff, and of course, some of that will cover up as we do more things, okay? But this is an idea. Usually when I work an idea like this, I work pretty fast, okay? Because this is just an idea of the painting. So I'll just go in now, and I'll take a little bit of extender, which I should say, I have a little cap of extender. Extender is a thin working medium. Now I'm going to show you, might as well tell you now, I'm just going to save it for later, but I'll tell you now. I'm going to use extender here. And we could also put out, you've seen me in this whole last year using the open medium by Derivan, okay? And uh, it is absolutely fantastic. So I'll just put out a little bit of that. But then I'm going to do some of the waves today a little bit different. And I've been playing with this for about a year. And it's time to tell you, it's just, it just kind of looks like a hair gel. But actually what this is, is really, really thick extender. Okay. And this has been in this container here for a year. 
and uh, I gel it. I use a medium to gel it. So it's really, really thick. You can put this out on your palate and it will be there for several weeks. Okay, I have some out there where I was painting portraits and it is not, it is still wet. So I'll put some of this out. But basically what you do to make a, to make an element like this, and I'll just go ahead and grab some of this and I'll make some more here too. It's wonderful. It won't, it is a uh, clear extender. Basically it's this extender and then gel. Now, see, I'm a consistency painter. I paint with con different consistencies to do things. And this clear, absolutely slow drying gel works fantastic for doing waves you know getting those wave colors in because you can get a real thin thick and I'll show you that as we get into the video but let me show you what you do to make it it's really easy you take some extender here and we'll, I'll just make a little bit of it here but you take some extender like this now this we don't have a label on it and stuff this is a new medium out it's called a rheology modifier what rheology is it means that it's uh, for those of you that love chemistry like me they, uh, it is basically the study of, of paint films and how paint moves over something. But we, it's called an acrylic thickener or a rheology modifier. So if I take just a little bit of it, just a tip of my knife like this, put into it, that's all it takes here. Okay. And what I do is I come up into here and I start to mix it up into uh, this extender here. And as I did it, um, when I made that big jar is I just uh, put it into the jar, closed, put the lid on and shook it. And after about four or five seconds, there was no more sound because it turned into a gel. But you mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it, mix it here. Or you can shake it up and it'll start to really, really, you can see it starting to gel up here and getting a little bit thicker. We can push that down. It takes a little bit of mixing to it, I noticed here. So we'll put it, you can see it's quite a bit thicker here and I'll mix it. And when, as soon as I start to mix it here, and push a little bit of energy into it. Now we're starting to get it gelled here. See, so it takes just a little bit, whipping it up here. Boom, 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 mix it. And so that's the secret of it. It takes just a little, don't, don't use a lot of it. And then whip it up and mix it up really well. And the more you mix, the thicker it gets. See, so now it's starting to get thicker and thicker. So as you, as it, you really whip it up here and it gets thick. It's just so fun. And so I always tell my students, some of my students are playing around with it now and, and using it. As you use this gel, you know, start out with it just a tiny bit and then you can add more as you get going if you want it even thicker or more like a paste and stuff like that. So, you know, but it does take a little bit of uh, whipping it up, just tapping it, whipping it up like this to uh, get that get that start to mix up really well and then you'll turn it by mixing it all up you'll turn it right into this stuff here like this so there you and you get this and you can make it even you can make it even thicker if i put in just a tiny bit more here like this just just go in a little bit more here this will go really thick now and you can see it, it just immediately goes, it's a lot thicker than what I have over there. And it'll stand up onto your knife. Now you've got a real slow, super thick extender that, uh, you know, is even thicker than your, uh, the acrylics and stuff that you have out there. So, you know, for consistencies, those of you that follow the channel for consistencies and everything I do, um, we I do a lot of thin thick painting and so what we're going to be doing here in the future with these acrylics is showing you all different kinds of ways to get this thin thick acrylics now what's the difference between here and here this also has a glue in it so it's very safe it's a glue that helps it you know this is a little dangerous if you go past one to one with that extender and that acrylic you start to weaken the glue in the acrylic because it's not as much as thin on so sometimes this is a good thing or you can use these in combination you can mix these up and they and now you have a super thick and a little extra glue and stuff like that so the whole system the whole the whole premise of the whole system here is to get artists to 
understand some of the reality or some of the, the mediums and stuff of the paint, and then you can change them to create your own look. So some of this thickening, now this will make your acrylics really, really thick. It'll do everything, but it also does extender, okay? So I have this, okay? Let's get back into this. I have this. I'm just going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna, some extender, just so I'm even a little bit of that blue and it doesn't hurt and let's do some let's do some sketching here and uh, so we'll come up right about maybe right out about here and start this shoreline up here and then we'll go up to that little hill right up here and we'll let it come off to the side uh, come off the edge here we'll get some trees and stuff up here like this and stuff so right up there like that we'll get some trees and everything and uh, so we'll get that bigger that bigger hill here okay and then we'll that that shoreline and stuff will come in this way and this hill will come down as you drop down here what you're doing is you're bringing that ocean a little bit closer so we'll drop down bring the ocean a little bit closer our line will get a little more definite We'll put in this other little bit of the, maybe right in here. And there's some some buildings and stuff up there. And that's the, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do them this time. So we'll drop that down. This will come right up in here into the, so this will bend like this. And then we'll come out, come back and around. Here we'll put some rocks and stuff out there, and uh, we'll put this sloping. And this is just to give me some good ideas here. So right about in here, we'll put that other slope. Some of this other trees will be a nice tree there. A little bit more of the beach area. Whether or not we put some of that other stuff in there, it's immaterial. So you know, I'm not going to do any kind of measuring or graphing it all out, especially with a few with a real quick start like this. I'm just going to. Uh, you know, just grab some stuff. Now, I'm going to just block in some colors, and I can do that with my big one-inch brush. You can use water. If you want to paint more a la prima, usually when I block and I work, I use pretty much uh, acrylics. So I usually go just acrylic, um, and so it dries pretty fast, and I like stuff to dry and layer. Okay, I'm going to uh, come in here with a little bit brighter blue, and put, add just a, let's add just a little bit of that gel, just a little bit here to keep this thick. And then we'll come right in here like this and we'll just drop in a bit of our shoreline here as that's going to come right in there. And then as we come, uh, you know, and this is a good way, I got my little clamp piece there. We'll just block that in. That's right about the right value. It's right about a value four, four to a five. And um, then it's going to get a little bit more interest and, and uh, a little more wave action as we come forward. And usually what I'll start to do is I'll start to um, actually just block stuff in with model color. So this is model, not mixed. Okay, so when you when I model color, so I'll start to get some variations like this. Now I don't like to do always just pure horizontal because the wave action is actually going to come in slightly at an angle like this. But you can see as I block in here by not mixing, I can get some of the you know early and just ideas of um, you know how this is going to how this is, uh, the waves and stuff might go, some of the movement of them, how it might go here, coming in. Now up into the, so I can see that, and you can see I can add some of this, just streaking back like this, I can real fast give some of the interest or movements to the water there, okay? Along that horizon line, if I feel it needs to lighten up or something like that, I can you know, come right along its edge there a bit. A one inch brush works pretty good. And what you wanna do is really, you wanna be fast, be quick. You wanna um, use as large a brush as possible. Now the sky is a lighter uh, value. So let's get up here. Let's lighten this up. Let's get up towards our 
or eight or so. Usually along the horizon line and stuff, you'll have an eight unless it's, uh, you know, a, a later in the day or so. And I'm just going to push some of that immediately right up here. And I can still see my sketch, my idea. But, uh, and I do like to, again, model some of the color so that I get, as I block in, I get a little color movement here and I get more atmospheric. Some of my color, you know, not mixing real well right up here, coming through and it looks just like the atmosphere. So I'll, I'll X my brush. I don't want to do too long. I usually do a long to apply color, but you want to kind of pull and X a little bit so you get some of that atmospheric of the, uh, the sky. Now I'm going to grab a paper towel here and uh, then we'll go a little lighter and really some of that sky that center area there and you can see it in this photo there right there it uh, gets a little warmer a little yellow so i'm going to add a little bit of yellow right up into that area there a little yellow oxide and we'll add some other colors and then even a little bit of violet along that uh, horizon line blue violet here so let's just drop that in and sometimes when I you know I get real close I'll push it like this so I get real close and see those are kind of pretty colors camera can't quite, probably pick up all the colors on it and stuff yeah but uh, and then I'll, I'll push these together like this so I start to get a, a bit of a blur just an edge to that and the more you wiggle your finger a little bit like that the more blurry that horizon line becomes. See, I just wiggle a little bit and that blurs that horizon line, sends it to the back. So you look at that, that's those of you that watch me all the time here, that's camera one sitting at eight feet. So that's what it looks like at eight feet and, and not too bad for that uh, particular part of it right there. Let's go in and uh, I'll put that, that one inch away for just a minute, but I usually, well, Here's the thing, in all of these, in all of these things, I, um, I try to show you all different kinds of ways to do things. And I'm a big advocate of big brush painting. You know, you try to hang on. So I think instead of going to the smaller one, I'll show you this. When I go to the studio painting, I'll block it in with the big brush, but because I know I'm going to come back with the smaller brush and do a lot more detailed toning and stuff into it. But you don't always do that in one of these paintings. But you, you do want to have that ability. So I'm just going to take this and push some of this up a little higher out of the way here. And this is my glass palette for some of you that haven't seen that. We're, I'm just going to take some burnt sienna, some of my blue, and I'll make some soft. I'll look at those colors up there, make some soft. Blue and the burnt sienna are almost complements to each other, so they gray each other out. Make some nice soft colors. Let's add a little open medium to this, or you could add a little extender medium, or a little bit of both. It's consistency. I like the consistency to be a little bit thinner than regular thicker acrylic, so and a little bit transparent. That's why I add the open medium and some of that. So, and I'll take a look at that color now. That's real close to being too dark. So I will push it sometimes or I'll take my, you'll see me all the time paint with a paper towel like this and I'll just press the paper towel just to take off a little bit of the extra paint so that my brush has to work a little bit harder. And it, you can thin it out like a little open medium will thin it out allowing some of that the, the light color from underneath to show through. So there's that way or you can actually mix it with a little more blue and the skyline color there and take it back just a bit. But I don't, see I got that just a touch too uh, smooth. It's just a touch, not bad. I can fix it, but uh, you know, you don't want to get too smooth. I want this a little thinner here, a little more blue, a little thinner here. And uh, let's push up. This is gonna push up to get this other one right up here. See that little bit of thinness there will allow some of the light to come through. And you can do this too. You can pinch your brush and push through like this to get some of that light interest from your, from your distance into your painting too. So sometimes when I work fast, 
I do that so I get some of that light interest right there into those rocks and stuff that are going to come in there. Okay, so let's just grab some of this. We'll work some of this down here. So I like that. You can see it's slightly transparent. See, this is just your first go through. So you're going to be doing a lot of stuff here, but I like when this happens like this. See, it starts to give me some of that rock interest right away. That comes from basically your gels or your thicker little paint here, but it's mixed pretty transparently. Now, as I come forward here, I can go a little green, a little blue. I can get uh, a little darker. Let's grab some yellow oxide in that as well. Because I come right over here to this side and you'll see the darker hills up into that area. Let's get a little more and model it so it's not mixed perfectly there. Model it, okay? And let's just drop some of that in. Now see, as I push this on, I'll get blues. And if I see a lot of, you know, blues and stuff like that coming out, I'll just go reach over and grab some yellows. So I want to get some variation here. And we could use the tip of the brush here, poke up and down like this to uh, emulate some of those little tree lines right up in through there. A little bit of the more of the yellow, some of the soft blue. We can just lightly emulate some of that, that hillside greens there. And just come down like that. So you can see we can capture very quickly some of that look. So you look at what is, when you push the color on, you look at what colors are expressing, and if you need to, add the other side. So, you know, there's some darker blue-green that is up there in the corner, so, and I know and I know burnt sienna tones that real well. So I'm gonna push up some more blue-green right up there, picking up some of that, right up there like that. Okay, make some smaller, and I can pull down to blur some of that down into the the mountain there and pull across. So your big brush here can do, and you know, you let it do very impressionistic things here. And it does a lot. Just the corner, especially this soft little fusion like this, can make it look like little trees up there pretty quickly, see? Without having to use a small brush and come along there quite a bit, you know, I mean, a lot of work. You can do it pretty quickly and emulate some of that look. Let's get some of this dark, just model this up. Sometimes when I'm, I'm working down into like this, I'll use, you've seen me and other things, just grab my big scraper, which is what I love, this, this scraper. And I'll model something right in there. You'll see me on several quick paintings do that real fast. I do like that. But uh, I don't always, it's not a something that I always use. I, I constantly try to change my techniques up a little bit until someone says to me, I want to buy this type of painting. Then I'll go follow those particular techniques. So you can see on there, you can quickly kind of grab the, the idea of that, that little bit of land and the water. And that's the idea when you feel plein air painting or if you're, uh, you know, if you're looking at a photo and you're doing what we call this, what we call a thumbnail, you're doing a quick thumbnail, you want to get that, you want to capture that feeling as quick as possible so that you can um, keep the working of it as simplistic as possible. So we're going to have a horizontal line here. That's where that house and stuff is. And we can just set that. In a lot of the landscapes, seascapes, you follow me all the time, I'm, I'm a real big advocate of horizontals and verticals because those are what make the really pretty seascapes and landscapes, horizontals and verticals. Let's grab a little bit of light. Let's model that into this right here so we can grab some of the... Now, see, I put that on and it's reading green. See how it reads slightly green? Over there, it's reading slightly yellow. So I increase my yellow, maybe a little burnt sienna, which will help neutralize that green a bit. And let's try that. See, that's better. That's a better color right in there. Now we can change and adjust that. We can model in a little bit more light. We could use a little open medium. If you want to play around, we're going to use this, but if you want to add some of the gel in there, you can. And you can, that just slides so neat. That is such a great product. I tell you, it's going to open a whole world for painters. 
but look at the the movement that you can get through that and uh, so let's tap that down we'll do more details and stuff the big brush is to get good color in just get good color in we'll have some of that right up over here and see I take that now again you see me use the knife sometimes on these and the scraper and stuff I just I love that kind of stuff you know it's like I'll wipe that brush put it down here for a minute it's like I'll take a scraper this is a little smaller scraper and just grab that right in there like that it just puts a nice bit of that in right away of that get a nice horizontal there to start the beach right up into that area and we could have a touch more light right up into the front and that reads more yellow so I'll add more yellow right in here to that beach color right there and I'll pull some of that color you know right across just drop it right in there and I'll, I'll refine it and I put the color on and stuff and then I'll refine it you know with my with my brush a little darker let's even add a little bit of blue to it right up here as we get up towards that water's edge there okay now see I'm just I'm just applying color and the good thing about this guys is it applies color here in all it's not mixed up and it applies it very casually and then we'll come in and we'll do what we call incorporate the colors and stuff we'll incorporate this get the colors working and stuff together but it uh, is a nice way so let's see we'll just come through like this and start let's get a little more yellow in our brush there Dave a little more yellow a little bit of open medium here into this and just work those together few nice horizontals pull down verticals as I get up towards that rocky area there we'll just push that in okay and as I come right out through here this I'll, I'll just kind of start to model and, and work these colors together I want some of those blues into that beach there we're gonna want that but now you see right in here that is that doesn't um, work really really well together not yet okay and this is where I need to so I get a nice working of the color there and because I want to have some of this color in along the shoreline this is where I thin my paint so I'm going to thin my paint out take a little bit of that extra out of there but I'm going to thin with the extender and push back and forth like this this is where that'll take this back this color out into the water and the water back out this way now sometimes I do a paper towel sometimes I take any kind of big old brush and you just pull that through anything depends on how quick I need to do it or I smear it with my fingers like this I want these colors they I, I don't blend them out I want them to incorporate and a bit of this back and forth movement like that will quickly create that edge that we can develop the water line to okay so as we come forward over here we'll take our blues and some violet we get more violets into the water here here let's get that and some whites I'm gonna have to put out some more white let's get some of that beautiful violets right out here that's gonna go right in there and see it's gonna my dirty brush picks up a bit of the yellows and some of those other colors and stuff and that's okay we'll paint just a bit of those violets out through here we have lot, lots of nice fun stuff to do in this painting so we'll take some of that out there let's uh, don't clean the brush just pinch wipe the color out let's take a little more extender some of our light beach colors and work those out right out here and we'll work some of those colors boom right out into here this creates a and you can soften it out as much as you want by lifting the pressure of your brush but you can see some of those colors you know working some of those colors through there and I can work more blues which we're going to and I can work more lights which we're going to but this gives me a real quick setup you look at that photo you look at that gives me a real quick setup of what it looks like now I come in and I can start 
refining you know the the seascape here a little bit more for interest and stuff like that so I can come in here I'll pick out a few light areas here first working that and we'll go back in you know you can push this around and soften it it's not too much important right now because we're going to be working some waves and stuff like that and I'll show you all different kinds of ways to work that but if you want to push it around and soften it you can okay so now I'm going to uh, just come in let's take a little bit of blue some of those violets lighter color here and let's go through what I call some correction and, and drawing basically of the uh, of the scape to take it a the seascape to take it a little closer to what we're going to see in the final one is this comes in just a bit so I'll take some of that blue and stuff and work that so I'll work I'll work some uh, contrast but I'll work a little bit more around the actual seascape here to get a little bit more detail just a touch more like what I want to see like I might push this back so you raise it up just a bit to about the height of that horizon line and then as we as it comes forward we can take some of our browns and stuff and drop it down so it's like a stair step almost here but you don't want to have a perfect perfect stair step so we just work some of that just at that edge watching that edge now I also will pick out some contrast stuff that like there's a nice big band of that light soil there that's right before the edge of the coast there and there's some of the sand right there nice light area of it very yellow so we'll model some of that Hansa I mean excuse me some of that yellow oxide in there let's just take about the this is a you know half inch brush so I'll just take just about the width of that and just drop that right across maybe wiggle a little bit up up onto the chisel so I get some differences right there like that so I'm looking for that light band that's right there and there'll be some areas of some burnt siennas and greens and stuff here that uh, will come and pull down come along the edge break up the edge there this is just this is just adding a little bit more I'm not going in and specifically painting yet I'm just starting to I do what I call expand my lights and my darks and some of my um, some of my contrast that's what I'm working on so I'll just band that up you know sometimes I'll, I'll just say hey you know guy that doesn't look too bad with that that little that little movement like that sometimes I'll break that up with like a little more color sometimes I'll add verticals and horizontals in there so I did a big horizontal stroke so sometimes I'll come in and add a few of the verticals in there and you can see the verticals make it look completely different see and you know most of the paintings you're going to have a lot of combinations of your verticals and your horizontals that are going to give you all the different looks so we can cut a better edge there and see by working that edge just a little bit I can create some additional interest right there let's take some of that and push that right in and grab just like that just real flat on your brush it's real light pressure but like real flat on your brush to give some of that other look there let's go grab some of this light here so I'll push that down and maybe pull that out here nice thick acrylic I'm painting thick right now so I get this draggy movement here here as I and that sets up a, a bit of the motion there of the uh, the beach I'm going to take a bit more green and uh, a bit more green and burnt sienna and set this down just a bit more here like that I like that now as we come back up and around the corner it's going to be our yellow oxide burnt sienna kind of modeled maybe a touch of green and here right up into this area here and we can start some of those pushes here and push right along that here those colors right and we're going to create that beach edge right there so we're going to want to have some lights and darks and edges here 
as this comes down, makes this cliff right here, right there. So, and light, so I push when I'm depositing color. So I'll push to deposit color and then I'll lighten the pressure. Sometimes pinch wipe your brush, lighten the pressure to move the color just a little bit there because it's pretty thick. So it moves, you know, so now there's, here we see some of that green and stuff coming down. We can emulate that. We don't need to copy it, just emulate it. It means just capture the image of it. Don't try to copy it perfectly there. Let's just grab some of that. Let's push that right down into here. It's like a bit, and see, I'll just model the brush through. So grab some different colors of it, model that through pull in some verticals and horizontals here. So I just create some of that movement right along there. I'm capturing the image of it, not copying it, capturing the idea of it. We'll paint some of that light right back up into that, right there like that, okay? And uh, we'll take some of this color with some of the yellows and everything like that and we can work some of those colors. Now that is really wet. I used that gel in there. Wow, that's really wet and nice there. So if you really want to keep it wet for a long time, you could use those that extender gel just like that. That thicker bit and it stays wet forever. And working that, get some of that interest in there. You can, uh, you know, I use my brush just like a little plane, so I can create a little plane there. Let's get a little bit lighter. A little bit more light, and just lightly touch it there, and create uh, a little bit of movement there to some of that ground here. And then I'll let some of that tack up a bit, but you know, you can just tap along. That's what it's just, Use your brush here and just way back on the handle so the tip stays soft. Because I don't need very much pressure to move some of this really wet color here. And uh, yeah, we'll get some of that. Maybe a bit of those greens, touch of blue, burnt sienna. But uh, you can keep it more atmospheric with a bit of that blue in there. Here, so it's softer. Now in the photo, it's very dark, but let's start out right about in here. Yeah, see, and we'll create the idea of a few of those little soft rising trees right there. A bit of that coming down there like that, okay. Even more, you see it out there on the tip right out here and uh, softer. So. Usually I'll put some on and blur it with my finger slightly like this, so I get more atmosphere. So you can see it's softer and stuff. So in the photo, it looks almost, it's, you can only see a little bit of difference between the real dark and that. And uh, what we gotta do as the artist is enhance that difference a bit, so that, uh, push the difference a little higher here, so that uh, we create more atmospherics here little touches back here little detailed touches just little bits there's some of that movement and stuff and so i'm i'm using all of this as a as a half inch brush and you can certainly go down with in size to a little bit smaller brush and do a touch more let's go just a bit more blue tone blue pushing a little bit of darkness in that got to be careful because, you know, we can, the more we do over here, the, the more we can do over here. So, got to keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to take a soft little filbert here and push back. A nice dried little filbert. See how I can direct it and lift off and soften off and uh, direct some of that little interest over there. Because it's just... The brush is dry, so it picks up the paint really easy. Just kind of direct it around there. Let's put a little soft kind of gray. Just some of that 
right in there so we get a, a bit more shoreline differences there and uh, right this this little edge that's right there and there's a kind of a real light spot of the of the ground there so let's lighten up even more and um, emulate there's a light spot right in here of the rocks so we'll emulate that a bit in uh, light and dark so we can pick up just a touch of that dark there yeah and you know model your colors constantly don't over mix too much you know it, it's really easy to over mix so don't do that too much and see I, I just want to work the colors here to start getting some of this interest verticals horizontals little line there of a rock that's a little too perfect so I'll just break it a bit there and uh, create some other tones burnt siennas blues you know as you go down this is a what's that an eight this is an eight filbert just a little bit smaller than the half inch I was using and we can use that now just to start getting some more interest and see I'll break right up against the edge of those cliffs there right where I see some of that other tones coming down that's um, a bit blue it needs a bit more yellow here let's lift some of that off here so put the color on and then read the color, what you need, and adjust it a bit. And, uh, you know, as you're trying some of these different things. So a little synthetic filbert. You could use the Fusion filbert also, which is a little softer. This synthetic, because the paint's getting so thick up here, this synthetic's pushing it around really nice. I'm going to put in a little stronger horizontal there. Strong horizontal like that strong color, strong colors on. See, it pulls your eye right into there. And um, yeah, it looks pretty good that way, okay? So let's do that. And uh, we can add a bit more interest and movements over here. Now this gets in, the, you know, I'm getting into quite a bit of detail that in a normal quick thumbnail I don't worry about too much and normal quick thumbnail I'm just trying to capture some of the ideas that I will you know the light and darks and the, like there's some small little trees up here I might capture a few ideas of them with just a chisel of the brush there but uh, I don't I don't get too wild and crazy with the actual painting up in that area there you know I just let that um, you know just let the colors and stuff there just happen okay so we'll lay we'll leave that let's just go a little bit darker maybe some smaller darker blue burnt sienna kinds of tones back up over here it's the light dark that just gives you so much interest so we just want to get some of these colors in here and again this is uh you know you could take a painting like this and completely finish it off with some more detail and stuff but we're doing a real quick capture I try to keep the painting itself in a real quick uh, thumbnail like this about an hour and a half two hours something like that it's just it's just a uh, real quick you, you know and you know you got to give the client and stuff an idea a nice idea of what what it is they're working with but let's go let me uh, show you little different thing here so we got an idea so we're capturing some of the idea of that coastline and stuff right so let me just show you what we're gonna do with uh, some of the shoreline here too okay and I have lots you know some of you have you know I have big long videos that you can see all of the, the painting on it but uh, I'll take some of this let me take my, uh, my scraper here and yeah, let's grab this one and see save all this this is just good stuff good model stuff that just makes fantastic rocks and all that kind of stuff so dump it off to the side of your palette there okay now let's take some I'm gonna go a little thinner let's go I'm gonna start out a little thinner and some of my blue 
let's make this just a bit of the violet and some white here. Okay, just a slightly different color blue than what I used before. Let's get a little more violet into that. Okay, thin, thin color this time. Let's go thin, walk this down, a little bit of streaks and stuff like that. Walk that down. You can walk it right up along the edge of the rocks. Just walk that down. So now I have a real thin application of some of my ocean color, and it's pretty close to what I see over there. Now, there's all kinds of ways I've showed you with brushes. I've showed you with the palette knife and, and stuff to do some of the waves, some of the back waves. And I, I just got a little dirty yellows in there, and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to show you with the gel here, maybe a little bit of open medium in it. And that's just a, a real thin or not thin, but it's thicker. See how this is thin and this is thicker. So the thicker is going to have more power to it, okay? Which means it's going to dominate wherever I put it. And so this is what you can really quickly build waves with. If you try to build waves with thin color, they'll disappear. Now I'll use that on maybe a real back one, but right up front up here, I'm going to take some of my white. I'm going to mix that up into here. And, and what's really nice about the, the glass is I can take a look at what it looks like, see? Right there. That's what I'm gonna be looking at, and I just drag it right across there like that. That's what your ocean wave's gonna look like. And that looks pretty good, not too bad. So I might come right in through here like this and just drag that right along like that, just to quickly emulate some of that ocean wave right there. Boom, and there's that wave. Let's come right in here. Let's just even grab some of this blue into here. Let's just grab a bit of that. A little bit of that moving back here. Hit and miss just lightly with my, my um, knife there so I can take a bit of this right into here and just use a touch of that. And now if I want it soft, I'll roll the knife down. If I want it more of a edge like a wave I'll use the edge of the, the corner of the knife like that and then if I want to soften it out and push it out like that I'll use it more flat onto the knife like that now don't worry about getting too much I'm going to show you that in just a minute it'll look like you know what you're doing okay so we're going to build a little softer back behind the wave and I studied the waves of course I lived on the ocean for 30 years and stuff but study the waves a lot and their movement but see a little bit softer behind that and then we can take out I'll show you in a minute you can just see some of that you know just crabbing some of that movement there now I'm gonna go a little thicker let's come right up here into the front let's put that bigger and I'll pull sideways just a bit because this is going to give a direction. So I'll not only slide one way, I'll slide a little bit of an angle pulling this way. Sometimes I'll push that back. I've got to be careful because my wet stuff ends right there. So we'll push this back here just a bit more right in there. Maybe a bit more of an angle back there. And I can set it up in small little bursts of waves and stuff. And then I can take some thinner stuff here and push up to it to get some of that bubbly movement that waves get right like that, see? Okay, and this is a real quick way of doing it. Now, what I'll do is I'll take a, uh, a nice clean fusion flat here and you can just rinse out your brush if you want. But I'm gonna take some blue and some violet here, model it up, maybe a touch of the lighter color into that, and a touch of open medium. I want to keep it thicker, so it has the same power as this right here. It's thinner than this, but it's thick. It's about the same thickness as that. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll just come in here and lift off from the back side what I don't want in that wave, that movement of that wave there. See, so maybe and change the blue up a bit maybe a bit more blue here let's just come in here and just pull a bit of that angle there maybe take out just a bit of it here i can just slide the brush sideways here take out some of that extra 
So I leave a little bit of that movement there. We'll slide. Sometimes you see that, you know, at the trough of a wave, you see that real dark for quite a while. And you can break up a bit, push up, break up, make it more of a wave there. If you want, we can uh, take a bit more blue so it's a little bit different. Pull that in, create some of that movement there. Okay, there you go. Let's uh, push in just a bit of that here. There, so we get that angle right there. That's nice. You can also, you know, take a smaller brush, like a, you know, a nice little filbert or something like that, anything. And you can come in and slide that to get other smaller movements of waves here and use your bigger brush to take back out. As long as the blue that you're taking out with and the um, white that you're putting it on with have the same consistency, you've got a equal push-pull. And so they, they can work really easy together, you know, here. So you can get some beautiful waves. You know, I can take my thicker, and if I, if I really want to get it thicker, I'll go more white and uh, Let's add some, you know, you make the white really thick like this, and that allows you to bubble the waves here a bit more, here like this, okay? And so I can bubble like this, push those waves in, bubble those edges and stuff like that a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna thin out, and I'm just showing you guys all kinds of ways, all right? There's all kinds of ways. I'm gonna thin out just this so it doesn't have quite as much and I can push in and up like this and pick up the edges of that. So, and I'll wipe my brush, okay? So you can push up in like this and just pick up, leaving just the edge, like that edge of that wave is rolling there, okay? And you can do the back, from the back side that same way here to give movement. So I can leave a little bit of a streak there. So it's a movement, so I can take this soft like this and pick up from the back side here and so you'll see the movement of the wave a little bit more this way see here but if I pick up especially if I use a edge of a shadow or something like that I can lift up and pick up and make that breaking edge of the wave there like that just looking at the edge now normally on a you know on a small painting like this I don't do this I'll do a lot of these I have a a ton. I have a ton of different techniques that give you different looks to your waves, which I do on the big studio painting. Normally I don't do that on here, but it's kind of fun to see that. And, you know, so here on, on this one, there's no real waves right up in there. You could, I mean, you know, we're artists. We can do whatever we want. We could put a little bit of wave water right in there. Maybe roll over here to the slightly thicker so we get just a bit more, slightly thicker paint. Just roll the brush there so we can do a bit of it. And let's just take a bit of our blue and lift off some of that. So we get just a touch of it around there, just a little bit. It's our painting, we can do whatever we want. But maybe we can uh, add a few more little uh, movement lines here. Now that's too straight of a line, and usually I'll do something like that, and you go, wow, okay, you know, we're not building a storm, but I'll do something like that. I'll put on too much, and you know me from everything that I teach you guys, that how I do it. I like to paint, especially if it's like with whites and stuff, I'll paint too much and then take out. I'll take out what I don't need, but I have it there, and so I'll take out some of this extra little bits here, like that, and create, um, some softer wave movement, maybe a little bit more violet, change your color, a little bit darker, a little heavier here. A little heavier blue will take out, completely take out some of that extra white that's long there. But we'll leave like maybe that little bit right there that just, a little bit right there just adds, you know, it's up to you. Just after a while, after you've painted quite a few of these seascapes like this and looked at the ocean, you'll get yourself some nice ideas about 
you know, how waves and stuff should go. But that is, you know, when you get that kind of look there, that's that's the beauty of it. Now, in here you can see some push-ups of some waves, and you can do that just by pushing up. You know, you can you can push this way like this, and then pull back, and you get that wave. See, you get that little bit of that wave, a little bit more of that wave, that wave action. That's up to you how much you're gonna do. I'll show you as we go to the when we go to the big painting. I'll show you all different kinds of ways. But I like some of that little bubbly stuff there. That's pretty good. Now we'll uh, come in here. Let's thin out. Let's make some of this softer light. And let's just take some of our softer lights and a little more extender. We're going to go thin. So now I'm going to use the extender thin. Why? This has no power. We don't want this to have power and take out everything we did before. We're just putting this on to get some interest into the, the wave line there. Maybe a little bit lighter violets here. So you can see there, are, uh, it's a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun with the waves. And it's a thin, thick thing. Make sure your waves are a little thicker. Make sure that what you're taking it out with is a little thinner so it doesn't have as much power to remove as much. If you want it soft, if you want, if you want that wave to have power, if you want an equal push-pull like I did back through there, make sure that your darker color and your wave color are about the same. But practice and, and use different consistencies as you play these waves and stuff. Use different consistencies. So there's some of that nice violet coming through. You know, I should go back to my, I love to paint this with a slightly bigger brush so I get all of these colors. Small brushes can leave a lot of streaks, but see all the colors that you get going right up in through here? That's what makes it really pretty. And you can, you know, like I've showed you before, we can use that more powerful. Let's thin it though, just a bit, model it up with some of that blue. But uh, like you see, just a little bit of that line there. And you can use that to put in that little wave line that you see there. And then take out what you don't need. Boom, just lift right up here. Take out some of that that you don't need. So I don't, or drag it some back a little bit to create some movement of it, you know. You don't need a, a, a lot of it there to say there it is. There's a little bit of a wave right there. You don't need a bunch make a lighter little blue here in violet and see I'll just do this I'll just drag that right along that edge and slide it back and forth a bit this is thin so it moves see how easy it, it moves there and it gives me some of these softer little wave looks here like that boom just like that see and um, so then I can uh, work a little bit more color. I can deepen, uh, you know, my waves here. There's some rules. Let's put a little bit of those gels. A little, just a, just a touch. See, I'm always figuring my consistencies here. Okay. So this has a little bit of power to it so that it'll take out. And I'll watch that right up in through here that power that gives some of that movement of that that water in there with the dark the light in the dark there because see it's just a touch of that there and then if I feel I did too much I'll just thin I'll maybe make this color just a touch thicker and it'll say up on top see boom and then I get this lovely kind of shimmering kind of motion that you get there light and just let that shimmer across there so now you got that see you got that beautiful kind of shimmering motion that you can get and this is just a touch more blue but it gets you get the idea there okay and um let's take some of this beach color and just go back towards that there now see the beach color is a little thicker so see it's right here thicker paint so it has more power so I can touch and then lift off and it'll take it right into that shallow edge. But it's got a lot of power up here so I can draw a little bit with it too. 
here and then just pull the lift off and it'll disappear up against that edge of the um, of the, the water there if I want to get that sheer kind of look back and forth here see I'll just grab a bit of that and you can work this I've showed you this in all different kinds of stuff you get some of those and then you can you know put some uh, let's go back let's take a little bit of this thicker white a little bit of this color here so it's a little thicker and you can when it's a little thicker you can set that lighter color right up onto that edge there so you can get you know a bit of that and you may you know depending on the waves and this photo doesn't show it but just a few of them you may want to add just a light movement here and there just a few maybe push it sideways gives it that the in and out motion of the waves there see so it's not super thick but it's not thin so it has it's like a medium consistency and after working those consistencies you'll notice that now look at how fast that happens see now if I wanted to put these kind of waves that are up over here onto this edge if you want those you'll need a little bit thicker let's model that just a little thicker now the wave will come off a little lighter see and we'll push along that edge a bit then let's just pull out and give a little bit of motion there to that wave right there like that see and uh, so it's not super thick it's another kind of in, in between this one comes out at that completely different kind of angle there almost let's just pull that right across like that and pull out and that's a kind of a strange angle sometimes I'll just take my blues like this even small brush and stuff and lift up right to the edge and you can drag that back and forth and you'll get more of that edge you'll see that okay so you can create those see it gives just a nice little and you can by leaving a bit of that white you can create that real bubbly now let's thin this thin this some extender thin it so it's weak very weak and you can just drag it like this across and create some of those water shim shimmery things right up here right up into that so it's very thin so you can drag it like this see if it's real thick it'll overcome everything that I've done but if it's real thin it just sits up there on the shimmer see you're controlling everything with thin thick color here there we go a little bit of that right in there like that that looks pretty good so yeah water like that is just so fun to paint you know and it's what I'm constantly doing is watching those that uh, thin thickness of it now the same thing will happen here you know as I use the same type of thing if I want to add more contrast pull downs I'll be looking at thicker paint so that it has more power so if I put a little bit more thicker paint in here and pull down it has more power and it sits up like that and then if I want to take it completely out I'll use thinner paint I mean the thicker paint but lighter color but if I want this to lift off a little bit I don't use as much and it won't be able to lift off very fast but it can start building it can uh, use some paint but it's just a touch thinner and this is what I do back and forth like this hi buddy <laughs> I got my I don't know if you see his head there yeah <laughs> I have my uh, son's four month old German Shepherd four month old German Shepherd come here come here and see come here <laughs> I know a lot of you like my dogs and stuff this is my son's four month old German Shepherd he's 65 pounds yeah he's he's gone my son's gone for the day so he's like dad can you watch it I was like okay I'll do that I'll take him into the studio so the little noises and stuff you hear in the background that's uh that's Peter the German Shepherd he is in the studio with me today along with my 
my Labradors, but I can break it up like this guy, see? And I can control that. Watch your thin thick. If you really want it to have a lot of power, thicken up your, thicken up your colors. And so if I want it to, and this is still really wet in there, if I want it to have more power up in there, I would, uh, you know, really thicken it up. So, and if I want it softer, then I do it a little softer. And we can come in and push in a little bit of dark right in there. You know, put in some of the darker kind of colors that we see here. And this is just a real quick painting, a real quick statement of what I'll be doing on, you know, on the bigger painting, I would put in a tremendous amount of um, detail and stuff like that. And I'll show you guys that on the, the uh, to the, you know, the membership one, we'll paint a seascape that has a tremendous amount of details. And I'll show you a few more brush techniques and stuff like that in there as you work some of those details. But uh, even with this, with uh, like the half inch brush in there, I can start getting some of that uh, interest. And I like that particular color. So I'm just gonna lightly just drag some of that down here into those uh, nice uh, verticals there and hor nice verticals, maybe a couple horizontals here as I pull some of that color down here to, to set some of that heel and that heel can have even a, a little bit more shape to it and I would I, I would shape it up a bit more uh, you know because you're gonna read this for the big painting you're gonna read some of the angles on here so I may you know pull more of a, a hillside angle there we'll put a few little trees and stuff there but pull more of that the angles that I'll see so let's grab a little bit of yellows, a little thicker here. Grab some of that angle of that thicker color there, coming down that hill there, like that. And then some of the verticals. But this will give you an idea. And of course, through the, the rest of the seascape that we do here, you know, I put in quite a bit more and if I go to, you know, if I go to, sometimes I'll take a painting like this, you know, I'm painting this one just to get my, uh, it's a real quick practice, get my colors down a bit, you know, get some ideas down. And sometimes with the client, that's what I show them, you know, like there's little houses and all kinds of little stuff that you do here. You know, there's some real light, um, you know, edges here for some trees and stuff that you'll put in and houses and stuff. And we have all different kinds of really fun ways to do that. I was looking here. Oh, here's one right here. You know, when you got these light tree trunks that you see right in there, see, that's, it's really a lot of fun. But that's why on some of the Fusion Brush short handle ones, you have this little angle that's right here like this. And that's what, that's what this does. That's the job of, of this angle here. As you just start, you start out first light pressure, then you start a little bit more. And see, you can scratch in your, your tree trunks there pretty easy. You could also use a palette knife and stuff, but uh, you just work it a little bit and just push a little harder, a little harder, and that tree trunk comes up. What that's nice about it is that you get these fractured edges and they sit in there really nice. Now you can add a few little you know, marks to take it off, like branches and stuff before you go working in. That's just another fun little thing. You know, I said, and then you would, of course, work the trees in with this. But uh, you can have that, this marks. This is an old, scratching like this is hundreds of years old. The Dutch masters used to do this to their paintings. So you can scratch through and start some of the, the detail. And, when I go to do a you know a big consignment piece, I may start it with a scratch, and then I'll come in and touch color around it and stuff to to get some different looks. But uh, you can uh, you know you can even like scratch up through here to grab some of those highlights. What you're doing is packing, just moving that through details through to uh, you know to see some of your original uh, light canvas color that you had there, right? So it gives you some ideas there. And of course, you know, we have a lot of seascapes where I take them all the way to completion. I'm not gonna take all that kind of, even though I want to, I want to just keep painting on this thing. 
but I think some of you have already seen some of this. Now, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, you just drop a comment there, okay? If you um, want to watch, if you say, hey, Dave, I want to watch all the videos all the way to completion, I'll paint them all the way to completion, okay? But I need to hear from you guys. Let us know. So, there we go. So I can paint some of that thing, and I'll paint, you know, I'll look for my tones, and some of the others, like the other seascapes I've done with you, We've got those violet colors that come in from the wet sand. This one doesn't really have any in there, but you certainly can. Now, there are small little impressionistic buildings, and I've showed you some of that, uh, you know, doing some of that kind of stuff. And I think I will uh, just put some of those in and stuff uh, here. A little burnt sienna with that. Just, uh, but um, just because this is going to be a nice impressionistic one push some of those colors in there see if we can push those uh, push those buildings and stuff in there you'll do those right in there and you know grab some different tones some lights and stuff and drag some of that across we'll build the roofs I'll show you um, well I've showed you on the, the uh, other landscape where we painted that nice little house in the shadow of the mountain and stuff how I go through and paint some of those little details and stuff and, and, you know, this one I'm just going to do quickly with some impressions and stuff here of some roofs and, and stuff here so that we keep everything uh, soft. And uh, we don't need to do that only. This is this is a quick painting. This is, a, you know, an idea painting. This isn't the final one. We're going to do all the work. So, and I do just enough to get it done. Unless I'm going to turn around and, you know, and sell it. So, you know, I might put in some more greenery and some more stuff going on. You know, we'll come up here, there's some beautiful toned yellow greens here. But you'll get the idea here with this. Beautiful toned yellow greens. Different, see, once this starts to tack up, you can do other pushes like this and put other bushes and trees and stuff like that right up in here, right up in front of them other little colors right up in there see um yeah you can uh you know here has got little trees and stuff like that but let's just say you know it's like i teach you guys all the time is your brush your angle all that stuff is important let's say i wanted to put a i don't want to put the trees that are right there i want to put more of a hillside a slope then you bring your brush in at that slight angle right up there like that that puts the hillside in Right up next to the trees, leave a few little, uh, you know, angles there, a few uh, little uh, streaks in those in that angle there, and you can push that up, capture up just a touch of that that feeling of like grass and stuff there, and uh, the slope. Let's put just a little more of an orange, burnt sienna and yellow, in there different color. Now see if I was uh, doing the detail I would do it you know three four or five times different color so I get some different details in there. Then we'll take a bit of the trees here. Always set the trees and stuff back up in front of them a bit. Little so you, the edges of them there and stuff. But that's how you get that little slope and some other stuff going on and you know, get some other little bushes and things. It's just fun, um, you know, and then of course, build some of these back ones a bit more. I just <laughs> want to just keep going, but I wanted to show you guys, I wanted to show all of you just, you know, a quick painting like this, try to keep, so we're a little over an hour, so we're getting close to the getting close to the time that I would put into something like this. You get an idea, you capture the photo, you get kind of an idea about uh, what you're going to do, you know, with the painting here, uh, colors and stuff like that. We could have a bit more of the vertical horizontals in there, like that on the hillside. That's, this rock could use a bit more development here, but that's pretty close. And then, the, you know, other uh, little bits here for if you're going to do the buildings and stuff like that and ideas 
shadows and lights and stuff and you know dropping those in and and um, yeah just real fun stuff but you know how much work you put in usually on the you know this is your this is your thumbnail for your big painting and uh, so you don't need that much to it but you know for some of you you know does you just take it all the way to completion so when I go all the way to completion I have to decide if there you know am I going to do something right in there to which does help push stuff back and uh, you know you're going to push those up into the front here but before I do that I would probably do a little more see a little more sand and rock development like right up in through here a little pushing out into the beach there this little bit of sand pulling down and down into the and vary the color but see a nice model color like this and swirl that down into the sand if you want it to show up you give it more power right more thickness here to work on that let's get a just a slight more burnt sienna in it and push that out here tap that around so you get some of that nice movement and some of that sand and um and usually what I'll do is I'll like in here where it starts to get too smooth, I'll hold my brush kind of flat and tap it around so I get that, that marks of movement, the highs and lows, especially as I start to come forward in the painting here. And uh, I'll be looking for some of that high and low movement. And uh, I'll streak some of this through. See, you can streak that thicker color and it goes on real nice and then you just lift that up and it just you get those beautiful streaks into your beach color just like you do with waves and stuff you can you know put on thin color in your beach and then streak on thick color through it so the thick color shows up more so you have some power and that gives you more streaks and stuff like that into your you know into your beach you know but more work if you if you want this to be a painting or come join me and we're gonna flip over and uh, now I get an idea get an idea of my colors you can you can put some clouds and stuff in there and you know let me just show you one more thing that I do. I'm gonna put a little bit more light color I want you see what I start to look at when I evaluate the painting you know what's one of the reasons why I do this is so I can see just how much of an edge I need to draw and what my tones are to receive and how much light do I need to give like right in here to really make this come forward right here on these front rocks and stuff like that. So how much more textures and interests do I need and stuff as I go back to make something disappear, you know, and I might take a soft or dark and just push that back just a bit so definitely that comes forward and stuff. So I start to look at that. But then also little things like, you know, that nice violet and yellow that I had there. Well, it's a little soft. So I might take a bit more of my beach color or something like that and push that in. Now I push that in very thin. And it's not completely dry back there. It's real close. But uh, I'll take a little thin blue so it doesn't have as much power so it doesn't take it out completely and I'll push a bit of that around push some of these colors around that I'm I'm using into the painting here and I can push clouds I can come back push clouds let's push a little bit of blue a little if you want a little brighter a little bit of lighter blue right in there but leave some of that yellow showing a bit of that soften some of that just pull some of those colors that are right up through there leave some streaks and stuff like that and um, let me go back to my uh, my half inch which I set down right here I like that uh, perfect that, that that one inch is just a bit big so let's go We'll go a little bit thin, so it's not too powerful, but a little bit violet. That's a little too violet, Dave. That's good for color. Let's lighten it up and thin it up with some extender so it doesn't have quite as much power. 
and let's just pull right along the edge. Now it could be a bit lighter. Boy, it looks so light on here. Sometimes that just fools you. Okay, a little thin, so not quite so much power. So it's thin. Thin, thick. I'm always watching the thin and thickness of my color. So let's just soften that out. Pull that right up through the, the clouds, right? I mean, right up through that sky right up there. And watch some of that yellow soften out and disappear just a bit. So that puts just a bit of that yellow. Let's have just a touch more of that back in there. And so this is a good way for me to, let's go up towards that violet, maybe up towards that blue, right up there at the top, and push some of that color in. This is where I really like to model. If I don't do clouds, I like the colors to kind of model up and through there a bit because it adds a lot of interest to it here. Get some of these grays and violets so but you can push that bigger blue there as well or you can take some of this and you know the photo doesn't show it and push some in some light edges of some clouds right along through there that just kind of disappear but maybe a bit of them there just light edges boom right in the back and see I do it and I'm controlling my clouds a little bit thicker so that they have a bit of power so I can just push up and draw them a bit so the color's just a thick, a little bit thicker there. So you can get that and let's just, don't want to make a storm, but maybe just a little thicker paint here, one right there in the front, just like that. You want to blur them out a bit you know, you can do that or just leave one right up there like that. Anyway, it's all different kinds of ways. But when I do a painting that's like this, real quick look. You know, beginners, this is great for you to, to try some of these techniques. And just paint through and realize, guys, realize it's a board and a little bit of paint. You know, how much paint did I use? Well, I used a little bit of white, but, you know, like the yellow and stuff like that, it's, you know, there, it's just a small amount of paint. It's next to nothing. So you can paint a painting like this and practice like this really, really, um, it, you know, doesn't cost very much. Really cost effective here. Blur that, that uh, back line there just a bit. So you can get some ideas and, and practice your setups and practice your... Uh, you know, practice your, your seascapes. Do something like this just to do practice onto your, lay, onto your waves. You don't have to make a completed painting. You just have to run through the motions of it and practice that. Practice your thin, your thick uh, use of your colors and stuff, okay? Practice is a great way. I do these kinds of paintings and stuff when I'm, that's how I come up with all these different techniques. I try, you know, I, I say, okay, how does this, gelled extender work on something like this you know does it work and it works really well into those waves it gives you some really nice waves and then practice your consistencies and stuff like that and and you can do some great stuff so you can come in here and put in more heavier stuff but this gives me a nice setup for my colors and whether or not i want to put in clouds or do something like that and you know i might need some more darks uh, you know, in there, more details and stuff. But that'll come with the big painting. I captured pretty much the image, okay? And um, practice. Boy, practice, practice. So we'll take an image just like this, and we'll go up onto the big 42 inches across, 24 inches high. We've got a big seascape we're going to do there. I'll do that into the memberships. Um, and I told the everyone with the memberships we were going to, uh, when you get up to that higher level membership, I'm going to take you behind the scenes into the studio and show you some of the things that we do. I'm, you know, like I said in in the join button and when we filmed that there, it's, I don't want to. I, I love presenting everything to you guys here on YouTube, and we love sharing what happens in our studio and love teaching you and everything. None of that changes, but I've always wanted to take some of you behind the scenes, and we thought we'd do it with membership. 
take you behind the scenes to the gallery here to how we do things and how we frame how we build stuff how how I go about the big commission paintings and stuff and we'll show you some of that there as well so we'll do a big huge seascape show you different parts of it and detail it and stuff like that when we uh, with the memberships and uh, to the membership uh, part of the channel okay and if you want that there you just go to the front page um, hit the join button there and you can read a little bit about the memberships of it other than that we did a seascape we'll do a landscape we did i've been promising you know you know wildlife and stuff like that if you want to see that go back to the what see, see a few wildlife portraits and stuff just drop me a comment something you want to see guys drop me a comment and we'll be happy to paint that with you okay you can go ahead and finish up some of this or take that but you know use it as a good practice it does some wonderful things okay and uh, i'll see you guys in just a few days because we're we're averaging about we're trying to average just a couple of videos a week and uh, get back into our rhythm again here okay thanks for joining us thanks for sticking with the channel and uh, subscribing and hit the like button and stuff and let me know what it is you want to see and we'll show you and uh try some of that gel that stuff is uh big and it just takes a tiny bit so it's like a container of this will probably last your entire painting career okay so uh, don't go attack a whole bunch with a whole bunch of it because uh you know you'll be surprised how how thick and stuff it is but it's fantastic stuff and it's non-toxic and it's it's fantastic and thick gel and and uh it, it's um but very very slow drying and you can just leave it out onto your palette it, you know for weeks it's nothing's going to happen with it okay and that just shows you those areas of those of you that live in real hot areas you need to uh, use a little bit more of that stuff to really slow it down okay all right guys you guys take care and be safe and i'll see you on the next video bye bye